What is going on guys? My name is Alex. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the video. Today we are going to be going over how to edit Twilight photos. So in my last video that I did, I brought you guys along on a real Twilight shoot of mine. You know, we started with turning on the lights, going through the whole house, making sure everything was ready, to taking the photos, going over the settings, literally a whole walkthrough. But what I didn't do is go over how to edit those photos. So last night I had a Twilight shoot as well, and I'm going to show you guys how I edit those photos. So I have not edited them yet. I'm going to be editing them live with you guys. Editing, editing, that's kind of hard to say. Uh, editing those with you guys live and show you exactly how I do it. I do single exposure twilight photos almost always. I know there's all kinds of different ways to do twilight shoots. I know a lot of people do like a light painting thing um, over the house, which is awesome and great, but that is not what we're doing today. These are simple shoots that look great. And I feel like this is going to help a lot of people not be so scared of twilight shoots. I know when I first started and somebody asked if I could do a twilight shoot, I was like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> you know, I was pretty nervous to do it. Um, looking up all kinds of YouTube tutorials, like how do I do this? Am I going to be able to do it? Can my camera do it? I just didn't know. And I remember I practiced a few times on my own house. You know, I did it at night and then I went to my parents' house and I did it there. And I was like, okay, I think I kind of got this. And really it's, it's actually very simple. You just kind of like get in your own head about how difficult something is or isn't. And it's just, it's not that hard. So I want to show you guys that it's not that hard. I'm going to show you guys uh, how to edit. Like I said, last time I showed you how to shoot it. So hopefully those two videos together will get you guys on the right track. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys, we are in Lightroom now. So I just went through the photos. I narrowed it down to four of them. So we're about to edit these. One thing to note real quick is I am using Lightroom CC, not Lightroom Classic. I know a lot of you probably use Lightroom Classic so that you can like bring those photos into Photoshop as layers, which you cannot do from Lightroom CC. Unfortunately, hopefully they fix that. That, but I just prefer to use Lightroom CC. I feel like overall it's just better than the classic and hopefully one day they will allow us to bring multiple photos into Photoshop as layers and we can just get rid of Lightroom Classic. That would be great. So anyway, this is the very first photo. Uh, not super glorious as you can tell by any means, but what I like to do is just go ahead and hit auto, see what it does. Um, I'm gonna bring up these shadows a little bit more. I wanna make sure that you can really see the house. You know, you don't want the house to be like overbearingly dark, even though it's twilight, you really want, like the whole purpose is that you're showing off the house. So make sure the house is nice and bright. A lot of times I like to go to the brush. Um, don't put a huge flow on it. If you don't know what flow is, it's, it's almost like opacity. It's like if you have it at 100, it's going to be just the full brush. Um, but if you bring it back down to like 50 or something like that, you're kind of just like lightly brushing over something. So I like to keep it a little bit lower. That way it's not super harsh. Um, but let's just go ahead and bump up the exposure a little bit, the shadows a little bit, and just start to play with this, see what it looks like. Not too bad. Uh, just gonna paint this house a little bit. Make it a little bit brighter, a little bit in here. Nothing super crazy. We don't want it to be overly dramatic. We're just trying to make sure that you can see the house real well. Okay. As you can see, they just put some sod down and it has not exactly grown in with the rest of the grass yet. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit more up here. All right, I think that's pretty good. Um, when you hit auto, typically it bounces or pushes up this uh, vibrance a little bit, which is fine. I think add a little bit of uh, saturation as well. One thing that I don't really like is how orange it makes these lights look. They're more like a, you know, a light yellow color. So something that I always play with is the orange and the yellows, trying to make it just look a little bit more natural, but also you want it to, you want it to pop. So I like to back down the saturation of that and change the luminance to more of a whiter kind of tone. Um, and then same thing with yellow, I like to actually bump up the yellow a little bit and then make that a little bit white as well. So you can play with that as much as you want, maybe make it a little less orange, a little more white, just adds a little bit more. And you can see if you hit this little back, uh, back slash button, you can see a before and after. Get out of here. You can see a before and after. So pretty substantial difference uh, just like that. And this sky, this house was facing 
uh, the front door was facing north, so the house, you know, I'm looking south, and that's unfortunate, you know, because the sunset uh, is not in the picture, you know, it's on the west side. So if we were to turn right, you would see a nice beautiful sunset right there, but looking that way, you don't really get that. So um, when that happens, which I feel like, unfortunately, that just happens more often than not, I'm facing either north or south for a twilight, but when that happens, um, I normally just replace the sky. So if you just right click, or if you're on a Mac, you know, two finger click on the mouse pad, go to edit in Photoshop. It'll open this picture up in Photoshop and we can replace that sky. All right, so it is very simple. You go click edit and then sky replacement and then you have a bunch of skies to choose from. I have my own sky replacement pack, which is actually for sale down below if you guys are interested. $37, there's like 30 skies or something like that in there. So I use my own skies. One of my favorite ones to use is this one. It always just looks so good and I'm probably going to pick that one. Um, and it's literally that simple. I mean, if you want to move the sky around, you can. You just click on that little image there. You go up to edit, transform, you can hit distort, and then you can kind of change the sky however you want, which is really nice because like in this photo in particular, uh, you know, I'm gonna edit four different photos and you don't want this guy to look exactly the same in each and every one. So what you can do is just kind of manipulate it a little bit, you know, move it around, change it, make sure that each one isn't exactly the same. I like how this turned out. So as soon as you are done editing that photo, you just hit Command W and that um, exits the photo and brings it back into Lightroom. All right, bringing it back into Lightroom and come on, come on, come on. There we go, perfect. So looks really good. What you can also do is ungroup the stack. Um, I like to do that sometimes just so I can copy the settings again. So just as a reference here, let's go over here. This is the original picture right there and the new picture. Pretty nice, I mean that came out really nicely. So the reason that I ungrouped it though, you can uh, copy those settings so that'll take all of our saturation settings, the brightness, um, it'll take the change that we did with the oranges and yellows and we can do that exact same thing on this photo right here, on this photo right here, and on this photo right here. And so the only thing that we would really need to do still is just go back to the brush, add a little bit here, uh, bring up the exposure just like we did on the first one, bring up the shadows just like we did, and just start to paint it in a little bit. Nice and easy, keep the flow a little bit lower so that it is not uh, too overbearing. And just like that, we are done. And then same thing, we would just edit in Photoshop and do the same process over again. All right, so now that we have this in Photoshop, just like last time, let's hit sky replacement, use that exact same sky, let it go ahead and load and done. I like it, no changes, command W, save it, import it back into Lightroom. Nice, quick, and easy. And this is real time, guys. I mean, I've been recording for nine minutes and 42 seconds, and we are almost done. So back into Lightroom, it is importing, and there we go. All right, next picture. This one looks good, except we need to add the brush. So let's go ahead and add that in. So you just change the uh, exposure. Okay. Looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit on that inner wall. All right, I think that is it. And then let's go ahead and bring it into Photoshop, just like last time. All right, same thing, edit, sky replacement, same sky, you don't wanna change your skies, keep it the same sky. Looks good, it's shifted over, you can't really tell that it's the same one. Okay, and Command W, done. I think you guys pretty well have the idea by now on how to do it. So there's one image left that I will go ahead and do, but that is how I do my sky replacements, guys. That's how I do the full twilight edit. Uh, it's pretty simple. The shoot, you know, I got there to last night, the sunset was at 7.35. I got there at like 7.25, got everything ready, made sure the cars were out of the driveway, turned the lights on inside, uh, made sure the landscape lighting was on and working. And by the time you do all that, you're pretty much ready to take the picture. So um, between that and this right here, it was a total of like, uh, 
45 minutes, something like that, of my time, you know, not including driving time. So pretty simple to do. You don't have to do all kinds of crazy light painting and other things to get a really nice looking twilight image. And for that image, I charged $125. That's how I personally charge. I do $125 for the first image and then $12 for every image after that. So most times people get like five, six, seven photos. So it adds up pretty quickly to be, you know, an easy $200 plus dollar shoot. This one where they only wanted the one photo, uh, it'll be $125, but my plan is to send them the four photos and say, would you like all of these? You know, what I like to do is put like a little uh, watermarked one, two, three, and four on it and send them to them and say, which one would you like for your one? Or you could do all four of them for this price. So uh, just a little tip for you guys to maybe get a little upsell with it if they don't want more than one photo, if you even charge that way. But that is going to be it for me on this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully that was helpful. If it was, please hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Okay. I know the video just ended, but one last thing. I sent those photos to the agent, you know, the four photos and put a little one, two, three, four. I, I'll put it on the video right here. And she wanted all four of them. So just like that, you know, made another $36. So that tip works. I'm telling you guys. All right. Bye.